Mara, and um, and or if there's anything else that you wish to to do to prevent you from uh, uh, being part of uh, this recording. Uh, we also uh, want for uh, to apologize for the change of link. I, I know that uh, first we had to do it on Zoom, but um, it seems that this seminar has brought uh, together so many uh, uh, people that we had to switch to Teams. So we apologize if there was any inconvenience for you to uh, to with this switch of um, of platform in the last minute. Um, anything else? Just uh, French or English? Uh, you know the Interact Euromed program. Uh, working languages are French and English, but uh, we wish to uh, facilitate all collaboration. So um, we would like to know if there's any problem for any of you if we speak in English. Uh, if you don't, we, we try to speak as slow as possible, as, as clear as possible, but please uh, raise your hand if uh, you have difficulties with English and you'd rather have it um, in French. We, we can accommodate to uh, to speak both languages during the, the, the meeting. Uh, so if you please can just um, raise your hand and and, um, and let us know if uh, if we English is okay or if it's better to, to have something uh, in French as well. Just note that all this material and the comments that we'll have during the presentation, you will have will be available for you in French, in English, and in Arabic as well, because we have everything ready for you. So if there's something you didn't catch, well, you, you can have all the material in written in, in the language that you prefer. So I'm just uh, looking at my colleagues here because I'm not alone, and we introduce we will introduce ourselves. If there was any hand raised, is that fine? Okay, so we shall we shall pursue then uh, in English um, for the presentation. We might just have some comments in French before uh, uh, from more uh, of our colleagues. Um, just so I was saying that we are a team. So here in the room we are uh, project officers. There's I'm not, I'm just starting from from my left side. There is uh, Isabel Nobio who can just raise her hand so we can um, oh, if she appears on the screen. Yes. Hello, good morning to everybody. Bonjour. All right. So um, Isabelle is working with this um, this team um, more dedicated to a better coordination with uh, the southern uh, countries, as well as um, my colleague uh, Francesca Marcato. So. Hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome. All right. Um, I will finish with Porto, but not, I, will, I will go first to uh, on my left side uh, with um, Mr. Sophie Scarvelis. Hello, good morning from my side too. I'm Sophie Scarvelis, I'm the head of the project unit at the uh, Interreg uh, Euro Med Trans Secretariat. And there is Axel, just go ahead. Good morning, I'm Axel Rodriguez Garrote, I'm project officer in the, in the program. All right, and then I finish the last but not least with uh, Kutsu Tervelli, uh, which is the uh, head of, uh, of the DS. Good morning, uh, I'm Kutsu Tervelli, the coordinator of the Joint Secretariat. Uh, bonjour. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, very short, uh, a few words uh, about the, the objective of this uh, re uh, meeting. It's the first time we were able uh, to organize uh, such a kind of meeting uh, in cooperation uh, with the Union for the Mediterranean and the West Med initiative. So for us, uh, it's a big success uh, to start uh, in that approach. Also because maybe as you already know, our program, the Interreg Med program and the Interreg Euro Med program in the future, uh, are focused on the uh, north side of the Mediterranean basin, but uh, one of the most important objectives for the future is to be able uh, to associate as, as much as possible uh, people or organisms coming from uh, the south side of the Mediterranean. Uh, so this is uh, our first attempt to, to, to reach uh, this objective and uh, I hope uh, it will be uh, possible uh, for you uh, to, to integrate uh, this program. We know that you are much more used 
to work with our colleagues uh, from the neighborhood uh, program, the ENI program. Uh, we are also working uh, at the level of the program for uh, uh, structuring a uh, better uh, coordination uh, in 2021-27, uh, sorry, uh, in order to capture uh, as much as possible also the, the, the best results we can produce all together in the Mediterranean area. Really, the, the objective is not to work alone, uh, but to share uh, our capacities, skills, competences uh, in the future in order to find the best solution to propose uh, to you and to apply them. What is important for us is not only to have uh, good projects, but uh, mainly to apply in the, on the grounds, in the territories, uh, the solutions. So, this is my message for today. Thank you again for being uh, with us today and I hope we will see you again uh, very soon. Thank you Christophe, for these words and I think that now we can just give maybe the floor to uh, our co-hosts of, uh, of this meeting. Um, we shall start maybe with Alessandra if you can if you are connected, I can, I can see Yes, good morning, yes. everybody. Thank you very much, Ludwin, and thank you very much to all the team. We are extremely pleased, actually, with this info date, something that the Union for the Mediterranean strongly supports and uh, has been calling for it for quite a long time. Indeed, it's a step forward in the Southern Med countries' participation under the associated partner status that we will uh, actually illustrate with this dedicated uh, session. And uh, uh, let's say we see it as uh, very important, actually, um, in the sense of enlarging actually, the scope of interest of the program to the wider Euro-Mediterranean region. This is also a very important follow-up to all uh, the decisions that are taken by the 42 UFM countries together to the ministerial, but also through the agreed uh, uh, roadmap. And of course, I mean, the amplification and sharing of resource, uh, best practice, but also technical assistance. These are all, let's say, important opportunities uh, we want uh, to tap uh, and uh, uh, foster, actually, in the future. I'd like uh, simply uh, to add that in a certain way we have uh, been already sort of testing this uh, uh, important uh, collaboration also through the labeling by the UFM of the Interact Mad Green Growth Community first and then very recently of the Euro Mad Governance Project. So we see actually the uh, mission that you have, the objective that you set uh, very uh, geared towards uh, innovation green and blue as uh, uh, absolutely, let's say, in line with uh, the decision by the Euro-Mediterranean countries, by the UFM countries altogether. So with these premises, I would like really to thank you uh, again and thank you, of course, also the colleagues of the West Met, uh, which are also key partners in all this endeavor to bring uh, the Mediterranean together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, and then uh, there is also the oh, second uh, partner, in, oh, second host uh, in this um, in, in this seminar, uh, which is um, Westmed Initiative. And uh, Thanos, would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much, Ludwig. Thank good morning. Good morning, all. Thank you, Alexandra. Also, from our side, as Westmed Assistant Mechanism, we would like to highlight uh, the importance of this kind of trainings, workshops that support actually a common objective of building partnerships and bringing all Mediterranean countries together to collaborate for the sustainable development, which at the end is the purpose also for indirect programs. Uh, we very much support this event, which actually comes as a result of our joint action plan, an action plan that was established between Interreg Euromed uh, and the Westmed Initiative uh, in the beginning of this year, and this, it is just the first step towards uh, stronger uh, collaboration. Uh, I would like to mention here that under the frame of the assistance mechanism of Western Mediterranean and in order to improve 
uh, complementarity and uh, synergies with other funding programs and instruments in the region with UFM2. We have bilateral discussions with Indirect Family to enhance cooperation, which is actually of mutual interest both for the managing authorities and for the WestMed initiative uh, in order to reinforce synergies and higher cooperation from the programming process to its implementation to achieve actually more efficiency while using uh, public funds. Once more, I would like to thank you and wish all the be very best for today's event. And uh, I hope this will be really useful for our colleagues, uh, both in the Southern Partner countries. Thank you, Thanos. And I will just um, um, use what you just said to um, um, and reinforce what you've said with, with where the idea came from. Uh, you know, for this programming period, we really we mean to uh, to to strengthen the coordination, make it much better. And we uh, we have discussed um, roadmaps and ideas, but we wanted to make them really concrete. And I thought that we, we thought that um, this type of seminar, when we just come clear about what we want to do and to embed everyone from the start would be, you know, the best way to do it. So this is, um, you know, one of the first, very first step. Uh, it's first giving the information and, and trying um, uh, regularly to, to, to involve everyone. So it comes to the question to, um, to know who you are, participants of, in this meeting, know that, um, well, you, you are stakeholders um, of the, the Westman Initiative. Um, um, you, you participate and you are uh, partners um, with the UFM um, working groups and so on. Uh, but we have also um, invited uh, some partners who are um, uh, working on proposals uh, within the first um, call of, of the program. So, so you know, to try to to, to, to trigger some some links or uh, some um, some uh, exchanges somehow. Um, we have also some member states that are present, uh, some national contact points. So we are a bunch of different, we represent a different um, um, instance of the, of the program, different bodies of the program. And we definitely think that it's the only way that we can work all together and if everybody is involved and that we, we discuss openly freely about what we do, how we Uh, you're silent, I think. Yeah, maybe muted. Yeah. You're muted. All right. Um, I don't know. <laughs> of, of long, I've been muted. <laughs> I don't know what, what, what you heard. <laughs> do, do you have any idea when I no, was muted? Was the last I was just a very yeah. last second. So, so the, the main thing was like we are a lot of people here from different um, area or different bodies from the program, but it's the only way to, to have a, a real dialogue because it's dialogue between ourselves and it starts with the very practical also um, uh, ideas and practical uh, ways of doing things together. So that's why this, um, this, this seminar is dedicated to practically how we can do it uh, together and from the start. So to start, we're going to come. We're going to start with the presentation. Then, um, if you have any uh, question, uh, you can write it down on uh, in the chat. Um, we'll have. Uh, we will try to dedicate also after the presentation a time where we can um, uh, take also some questions, uh, live questions. But if you can already, when you have an idea, write it down. You can just like take questions uh, all together uh, at the end and and, and pursue. Uh, the, the the exchange uh, live. Uh, so we we'll try um, to have three parts in this presentation. First, we need to know what what are our common priorities. What what is it about the program, and what about your priorities? How we meet. Uh, so we we'll introduce you to the four missions that uh, we have uh, defined to reach the um, the goal, the challenging goal of the program that really needs that we don't. Uh, limit ourselves to working with the northern shore of the Mediterranean, but we encompass all the, the, the countries from the southern shore and the eastern shore. 
Um, the second part will be more just explaining to you which types of projects are confounded um, in the within the program. So which kind of participation we can expect uh, because we have thematic projects and government projects. So we'll explain to you what it is about. And the third part is concretely how you can be part of it. So uh, with being associated partner or confident partner and also not only being partners but benefiting from the, the benefiting from the, the results or also bringing your expertise to, uh, um, to, to the projects and so that your your challenges are also taken into account and something that also can be the results can be more adapt uh, adaptable and adjustable also to your situations that we share in the same within the same challenge. So let's start with what are our common priorities. So I will give you um, shortly the framework and the main goal of the Euromed program. Um, so to let you know, so the program brings together 69 regions from 14 countries uh, from the north shore of the Mediterranean. Uh, it's budget because it's important. It's about 294 million euros. And this money is the, uh, allocated to the program for the period from 2021-27 period. Mm -hmm. So the um, participating countries are member states, candidates and potential candidates, candidates to the European Union. Um, uh, they are eligible to a co-financing because it's always co-financing uh, to a level of 80% of their budget, their project budget. Nonetheless, as we said, even if officially there is no member state from the northern shore, we are really, our ambition is so broad that we need the full participation of the whole shores of, um, uh, of the southern eastern parts of, uh, of the sea. So, um, some, the, 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 the northern shore cannot be funded, but, but uh, some partners from the southern shore can be uh, funded and receive direct grants, but we see how um, we can nonetheless work together. So the, the, the ambition is to support the transition towards a climate neutral and resilient society. What we have is the Mediterranean. We can be, um, we agree with this. We have many resources that we have to protect. Non stavo dicendo, è un problema se però il mio computer. What? Eh. I'm sorry, <laughs> just uh, is there, is, is it okay now? It's okay. All right, sorry for that. So, um, what we want to uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we had technical problems again, so I was muted. I think that today is not my day. Nobody wants me to speak. <laughs> anyway, so, well, to resume, so what we want to do through the actions, we expect the projects and the partners to fight against the impact of uh, global changes on the resources of all countries uh, that borders, uh, border the Mediterranean basin. So we want also to ensure sustainable growth and the well-being of citizens. So you, you understand that what I've just said is very broad, it's shared by everyone, but it's very challenging and we cannot do it by ourselves with the limited amount of money that we have. So that's why we really need to have all the, uh, the initiatives, all the different programs to work together and not um, just overlap with uh, uh, projects uh, that just like pile up but just having something more integrated. So it's why we have to work together. So, uh, and we have many stakeholders in the Mediterranean that share the same challenges. So to create an impact of our territories, we really have to cooperate and coordinate our efforts because our goal is to impact and change uh, things in the Mediterranean. Um, well, the Interregnet program, as um, it sounds, you know, quite obvious, is a focus on environment uh, and climate, and it is in line with the European Green Deal, the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, and the Territorial Agenda 2030. So, I think that um, 
this is um, we can. Uh, my, my goal was to uh, um, to convince you that we have the same priorities, and, and I think that I reached my goal for this uh, this first part. But it's this um, because we, we we share it with um, it's a it's a it's a, it's a global and uh, global ambition. So here, what we have done, so it's very challenging. And of course, with the program, uh, we thought about the best way to, um, to reach this goal uh, with, all, uh, with all means. So what we did, um, so we, to ensure concrete and manageable solutions, uh, we have identified four thematic missions that all together contribute to this challenging goal of contributing to the transition towards a climate neutral and resilient society. And each project will have to fit, so each project that we will, um, we will uh, co-finance will have to, uh, to fit within one of these missions. So I present them to you. So the four um, missions, how they work, they, they operate like a portfolio of actions. Uh, addressing the same thematic issue, and their goal is to enhance the full potential of their results. So the missions, we can say, push the results of single projects beyond their initial ambitions to address issues of greater importance. You know, just we would have projects working on, on part of the solution. And what the missions will do is just finding a, a higher meaning and something that combine all together, the results combine all together, can have, you know, answer um, issues of greater importance. That's what we mean by missions. So the first mission uh, is about strengthening an innovative, sustainable economy. So um, for this mission, uh, or for um, for sub objectives, we say we mean to support the, trend, the transnational cooperation of the four elite stakeholders. Uh, we'll also seek to favor increased act, uh, innovation activities, services, and organizational patterns towards circularity. So, circular economy is one of the key words. Um, we will encourage, encourage also uh, the uptake of sustainable production and consumption practices. So, we, we need to be sustainable, circular economy, cooperation of the four LX. And the fourth, fourth keyword uh, is the regional smart space adjacent strategies. We, we really need to improve the, the co-implementation and the coordination with regional smart specialization strategies. This is for the first mission. And we see uh, right after or concretely the, the project will be in line and we will um, we'll, uh, contribute to these missions. It's just uh, in a few slides I'll show you how um, it works uh, concretely. So the second mission that we have identified is protecting, restoring and valorizing the natural environment and heritage. So what we mean to do with, um, or we mean for the projects to work on uh, is to promote climate change mitigation and adaptation measures. Uh, also, in the projects will have to aim at restoring the created ecosystem on land and at sea. We expect them also to boost the connection of natural ecosystem at transnational level and also to valorize economic and social value of biodiversity. Our third mission is promoting green living areas. So in there we will find activities related to urban activities. So the projects will act on the negative impact of urban activities. This is one of the, of the, the, the goal we will pursue. We also um, insist on the, fa the facilitation of energy transition. We also um, aim at improving territories' resilience to the effect of climate change and promote citizens' involvement in green transition. This would be what the projects we expect will work on. The last mission, and not the least, is enhancing sustainable tourism. We you know that in the Mediterranean, this is a subject that is really at the heart of the Mediterranean. So, what we pursue with a project is to integrate tourism in circular economy. That's a word that we find also in, in, the, in the first mission innovation. 
contribute to environmental neutral tourism. We seek also to improve sustainability of ecosystem, ecosystem services and also to preserve natural resources and cultural heritage. Actually, the tourism is really a, course, uh, a key sector, both in terms of protection and valorization of the natural and cultural resources and to support its recovery. Um, but this mission is a bit special because it addresses the development of sustainable tourism as a transversal issue. So, um, I said circular economy was a word that we had also in, a, in the first mission. It's just because um, tourism as a transversal issue, we'll, we will see in this mission projects that will work on different uh, objectives that are related maybe to the the to the the the, 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 the the same issue addressed in the three first missions, but with an orientation, a clear orientation on tourism. To be a bit um, clear, know that um, we are part of uh, the the EU, um, EU system, and of course, uh, when we draft a program we have to select specific objectives. So this is a bit, you know, we, we enter in a, the European way of uh, uh, organizing things, but how, and it's what I want to be very concrete, how the project will um, enter the program and work on the different missions. We have a list uh, provided by the European Commission um, of specific objectives that the projects can work on. They are very, very um, circumstanced. So, uh, uh, sorry, I cannot, I cannot find my word. Oui, they are very um, described. Yeah, and um, they, are, they are quite limited. You know, uh, you have them here listed. So uh, this is the first entry of a project. It's Deciding, well, first we have all missions and we hope that the projects will project themselves working on a global mission with a higher purposes uh, of what they can bring, you know, they can work, they will work on a very specific objective, but with the idea that they will contribute to something higher. So each project concretely, when they will apply, then we choose a specific objective. I'm taking, for instance, uh, 2.6 that you see on the slide, which is supporting circular economy. So maybe they will just develop something about supporting circular economy, but this working on this specific objective will contribute in a bigger picture of strengthening the, an innovative sustainable economy. So it's just a part of the solution that we want to be more encompassing uh, with, uh, with the different missions. Uh, this is important because we, 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 the question might be that what, what is the reality of these missions? When we know that projects will work on a specific objective, they will just choose. I'm choosing 2.6. I'm working on supporting circular economy. Our idea is not to isolate projects working on their, their fields, but through these missions that will be uh, animated by different types of projects, we hope that we build communities of projects. So it would be projects working on the same type of issues, being brought together, discussing together, finding synergies, to fulfill these missions all together. And this will be surrounded, it will be uh, accompanied by different types of projects. Which gives me my transition to which types of projects are confounded uh, within the program. So, you know, we have, we support two types of projects. On one side, we have thematic projects. And as I said, these thematic projects will project themselves working on a, on a mission. And for this, this, they will be more specific, choosing one specific objective from the uh, European Commission list. So 
their ambition will be first targeted and limited to the objective that they choose. That they will be part, they will contribute to a more general mission. And these will be the thematic projects. On the other side, we will have governance projects. These projects will have the goal, they will have the ambition to amplify the results of the thematic projects by valorizing their joint contributions to the mission. Now we try to be clearer and take both types of projects one by one and, and explaining uh, more in details the different sub categories of projects that we have. So let's focus first on the thematic projects. So the thematic projects are divided in four categories of projects. The, the names are quite clear and, and just indicates what they will do, but we have study projects. So these projects, this consortium of partners, we mainly perform analysis to better address the thematic issue or open the door to the development of new instruments, policies, strategies, and action plans. We'll have also test projects. So the partnership will experiment common instruments, policies, strategies, and action plans already developed to validate concrete solutions to be transferred. Then, of course, if we have study with the development of new solutions, testing of these solutions, mm -hmm. we expect to have to transfer projects. So these consortium will optimize and share validated common instruments, policies, strategies, and action plans to have the stakeholders to adopt that, or the stakeholders and the ones that have tested or um, already the, 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 the solutions. And then we have a fourth type, um, which is a strategic territory project. They will conduct, they will do the whole types of activities. They will conduct studies, test solutions, and transfer results. But this time they will address uh, the strategic topics of a specific type of territories. As this will be something, the types of course that we will launch later during the programs. But so basically, we have thematic projects working on a specific objective, something quite you know, targeted and limited, and they will study the in deep. Uh, they will either test something that has been already uh, developed, and they will work at transferring validated and tested uh, results. These are the three types. So just to give you the idea, why did we you know, cut the projects in three different types, study, test, transfer, while right? most of the time you have projects conducting the whole thing. It's just we really want to have quality in our projects and we think that it was the best way for us to do it. It's just giving the time to dedicated partnerships, so they, they have different types of projects. When you study an area, you don't have the same, you don't expect the same institutions or the same partners to work uh, in a study project than in a transfer project. So we wanted to take the best of, of the funds that they can have and just have some uh, very, very um, uh, skills, skilled um, partners for specific type of tasks. So that's why we took, you know, the, 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 uh, the direction uh, to uh, and responsibility to, to to create different categories of projects, so study, test, transfer projects, and strategic territory projects. So this system, uh, these are the whole types of uh, thematic projects that we will finance throughout uh, the programming period for the thematic projects. Once again, just to show you the, so the little uh, men that you have on the bottom are all the different types. They represent all the different types of projects and each of them uh, will uh, contribute to one of the four missions uh, that tackle the challenges of greater importance. So, but how do we manage this? So, which type of projects uh, are confounded in terms of governance projects? 
So, government projects to implement actions to fulfill the better government, the Mediterranean governance priority. And specific objective, this is called a better cooperation governance. It's a specific objective from the, the, the Commission. They are divided in two categories. So, the first one is thematic community projects. And the second one is institutional dialogue projects. And the word community is, I've already mentioned the word, is um is what we uh, we expect to create and we have already a, a, an experience uh, on this matter is to gather projects working in the same area put them all together to develop a real dialogue that um will um will um uh, will produce uh, synergies and real exchanges and so on so the thematic community projects they will lead and they will they will uh, be they will lead a community of projects uh, uh, to facilitate uh, the exchanges between the different uh, thematic projects working on the same area and the development of synergies between them um, the partners that will be in charge of this uh, thematic community projects will develop technical knowledge uh, embedding the results of all the projects in their community and um, they will also uh, develop strategies to support the effective transfer of their results to other territories and stakeholders so it's not about transferring isolated results of one single project but it's finding a higher meaning and higher purposes of all these small, uh, I'm saying small, but it's not limiting, but of these results, specific results, I would say specific, but specific results, finding them, uh, 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 integrating them and finding a higher um, degree of importance and trying and, and supporting the effective transfer of these results that make sense all together to other territories and stakeholders. There will be one thematic project per each mission of the, for the whole duration of the program. So we, I, 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 um, I uh, introduced you to four missions. So there will be four missions for thematic community projects and one per, uh, per mission. The second type of uh, projects, the second category, is the institutional dialogue projects. Mm -hmm. They will support effective cooperation of all stakeholders concerned by the program missions in the Mediterranean, not only in the, the program area. They will optimize the conditions for the transfer and the mainstreaming of the project's results into practices and public policies to improve the governance at transnational level, within and beyond the Euromed program area. So their purposes, as we say, institutional dialogue, is really to make the bridge between the different territories and really support and really produce the conditions, optimize these conditions to transfer, because it's, you prepare this ahead, you just don't, don't um, sell a product. It's more like working together and for this we need to um, to discuss ahead, and these projects have this uh, in their goal is to um, to have an effective cooperation, preparing the, the the field for this. There will be one institutional dialogue project also per mission for the whole duration of the program. So for seven years, there will be one there will be one governance uh, one territorial. Uh, well, I'm sorry, one thematic community project and one thematic, uh, one institutional dialogue project working to, uh, together on the same mission. And they both will seek to improve the governance of the issues at transnational level by engaging in more strategical activities that shall enhance the coordination among actors in the field of the mission. So you see there's really a difference between the thematic community, uh, the thematic projects on one side and on the, on the governance projects that really, really amplify the results. 
and this amplification we um, we we have drafted um, uh, a strategy and the program revolve around this uh, strategy for amplification of results because the results we capitalize we, we need to capitalize the results but the capitalization capitalization of results needs to to serve the purpose of a better coordination a better um, governance of the Mediterranean for um, uh, uh, within the different issues. Between, uh, we have quite a, a, a lot of questions. Yes, we have because questions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we can answer to some okay. questions. Yes. Yeah. So we will answer first to some questions related to the part that you have already mm -hmm. presented, yeah. and we will keep the questions that are related to parts that you have not yet presented for. Okay. Uh, um, so, okay. we have, a, so we have uh, the one question on uh, if you can just better explain the different type of products, giving some example. So I don't know if um, Curto, Eva, you want to better explain us what you expect, but I think it's uh, uh, the difference among the thematic projects and governance one. Okay. It's correct, Eva. Yes, hi, good morning. This is Eva. Sorry, I don't have my camera on. Can you hear me well? Yes. yes. Thank you. OK, so um, we have lots of experience in other interact projects, but not specifically in this one. So um, although it's super interesting, um, it would be good if you could bring some examples, very concrete examples of what a transfer project could be or a test project could be, or uh, what we, we're more interested in the uh, thematic projects rather than in the governments. But I guess everyone would be interested in that you bring examples to to all of them. It's just to know exactly what you mean by transfer and test and strategic, right? I don't know if it's possible. If not now, maybe in the website. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> actually, the, what we did with uh, like study, um, test and transfer is actually what a regular project does. A regular project, most of the time, you you enter, you, you have to have a phase of where you study the, 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 the you analyze the situation, and you um, you for instance you develop a, a new um, a, a roadmap, um, an example of a a roadmap, or or you draft a strategy uh, in a, for regarding a certain issue, then after you implement it or you you, you test it. You implement it uh, on, on the territory and then when you have the results and you see that it works, you adjust it and then you try to give it to some other territories. This is mostly what a regular project does or what we can expect. In our case, we realized that um, when you have a partnership uh, and you expect to have this development, uh, you know, making the analysis that needs to be done, um, on the field, most of the time you have partners like university, research centers, agencies, and so on. But when it comes to um, testing uh, these solutions, so when you have a strategy and you want to implement it uh, in, a, in a municipality, for instance, uh, you need other types of partners within the program, uh, within the project. The fact is, it's that you you weaken sometimes because your partners, your partnership is limited because there's a certain time and there's a certain amount of money available. So uh, when you when you do your partnership, you take you know just maybe one or two partners that are more skilled or more um, uh, dedicated to uh, the analysis part. Uh, then for um, for the testing or implementation of the, the strategy. Uh, you'll have one or two uh, or three institutional partners that will be able to take in um, the developed solution and, and implement it um, within their institutions to test it. Uh, and then when it comes to capitalization, what we call before capitalization in, within the program, we call it transfer, meaning that you have something that works. You know that because we are a transnational program, so transnational means that we, we are, uh, all challenges are common, so uh, we, we don't want to limit it to just the partnerships itself, but uh, having more impact. 
or having an impact just and, and transferring, giving it to um, implementing what has been tested to another uh, partner, other institution, or it can be also SMEs, it can be uh, different types of partners. And you, 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 you do that, except that you need different types. For example, you need chamber of commerce. If it's um, if you want to test something with SMEs, if it's uh, training uh, uh, sessions for uh, um, uh, the transition of uh, SMEs to a circular economy, for instance, uh, your product, your solutions might be um, might be uh, a, a training for 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 SMEs or support uh, service for SMEs for, to uh, to go towards circular circular economy. So you need, for instance, in your partnerships to have chamber of commerce. So, but if if we have regular standard projects, you have to have from the start your partnerships with different profiles. So we realized over time with the previous uh, programming period that um, it was too too little, and and the partnership had to um, to, to to spread to to have two different scales uh, altogether, and it was not maybe the most effective to produce something uh, strong. So that's why we have decided, and, and also we, 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 we observe that the project sometimes spent too much time in the, in, in the analysis um, phase and this testing was very, very fast uh, done and then there was no transfer. So we preferred to propose to have just projects and partnerships focusing on the first phase of uh, the thematic projects. Uh, and then the second one, testing something that was pr produced because we don't come from scratch. There are lots of things that exist already. And we, we encourage, it's a way also a way to encouraging um, uh, partners, uh, partnerships to uh, to take what does exist and testing because sometimes you don't have to to, uh, to redo the whole thing. So it's why we, we, we have just the three types of projects that we have. They are just reflection uh, of uh, the standard projects, but we, we enable the partnership just to focus on one type of activity uh, that usually you see uh, embedded in a, in a standard project. Uh, and so it enables to have a partnership, more small partner working on the same type of activity at the same, uh, at the same moment. So that's, that's the only thing that is different. It's not something that we, we have reinvented. Uh, it's just the rigorous type of activities that we do in standard projects that we just decided to mod modularize. We just have uh, different types of projects corresponding to the different phases of a standard project. That's, that's all it is, I'd say. Yeah, we have two okay. questions from... Uh, we have two questions from Lamia Kamal, but we, we will answer you now in the second part of the presentation. The first question is if is Egypt eligible for funding mm -hmm in the two types of projects and we will answer now how you can be part as associative partner and the second one is what are the dates for launching those projects thematic and governance and also in this case we will answer now mm -hmm. then we have another question does there have to be a governmental body involved in this case it depends it depends on the project in which you will be involved and another question that is linked to this one uh, the project in the blue economy are accepted. Of course, they are accepted. So mm -hmm. you, if you intend to participate as associated partner in uh, a project that is that you deal with blue economy, of course you can. Um, yeah, blue economy is uh, you, you can find it in all of our missions yes. and specific objectives, uh, depending uh, the topic tackled, the angle tackled by the uh, by the project. Uh, so we can, we don't have um, other questions, so you can okay. go. So we okay. will so ah, raise right. his hands. So, Mr. Butuba. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Morning. Yes, um, uh, thank you very much for your presentation um, uh, about the TREG orbit for the next period 2021-2027. I would like just to um, uh, um, ask uh, some couple of uh, questions. The first one, are both types of the projects uh, 
Uh, I mean, the governance and the thematic projects of Interregnet already launched on the way to be initiated and towards which member uh, states, only the European Union's uh, member states or uh, the, um, in the neighborhood member states. Uh, uh, also, you are uh, you were talking about transnational programs and the necessity to ensure by the end of each one um, a kind of transferring of competences. You mean that uh, a kind of a capitalization of experiences or um, exchanges of experiences towards the member states. Uh, also, if, uh, any um, information that could help to understand the funding of uh, the projects, if uh, uh, they can be um, they can be uh, dedicated to the southern region, if there any uh, specific amounts to be delivered to the member states of uh, the southern region to participate to this uh, program and through. Uh, which procedures. I thank you very much. Okay, uh, concerning the participation uh, of partners from the southern countries, we will just now explain you exactly in which way uh, partners can uh, participate, how and which kind of funding or not they can um, uh, they can receive from the from the program. And in terms of capitalization, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know if I catch uh, well the question, uh, but um, of course uh, our program is really, um, for us it's really important to capitalize on the results of any initiative or program, either at transnational or uh, cross-border or national uh, level. So to reuse what has been already developed, the results which are um, important for the whole, uh, of course, uh, territory of the UN program, and to work on the results already obtained, um, but also then the results of our projects to be embedded in and in, 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 uh, reused in other national programs. Uh, initiatives, European programs, etc. So it's working on the both sides. We we use what is already done, and also what we have done within the program, we uh, transfer it, and we make uh, also the, it's really important for us to uh, that our results are used uh, for mainstreaming activities in order to modify, to change our uh, policies in the territories of the of the program and beyond also in the world uh, Mediterranean area. So let's continue. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the net last part, it's how uh, concretely you can be part of it. So we do have the possibility to become funded or associated partners. Um, so first, who? Who can be partners? Uh, whether they are confounded or associated. So this is something you might not be <laughs> able to read, but you can just look at afterwards and it's a bit done on purpose, well, meaning that actually almost any kind of pro, pro partners can be partner, you know, uh, body can be a partnership in, if, you know, a uh, program. So um, the only thing is, uh, it depends on the terms of reference that are drafted and published for each call. Um, so bodies from uh, the EU countries and countries participating to programs under the instrument of pre-adhesion, uh, which is IPEA uh, bodies, are eligible to become funded partners. Uh, it means that they have a budget co-financed by 80% and this is the list that of eligible partners, which I mean is quite broad. So I'll give you a few seconds, but you'll have it in the list of um, detailed lists when you have the, the, the material. And uh, bodies from all countries can be associated partners. These are the same, you see from the previous one. Co-founded partners or associate partners, they are the same. All that we have to be careful about is that it must be relevant to projects, tackled um, issues and objectives. And of course, it's 
depends on the terms of reference. But basically, uh, any partner with relevance can be associated as the associated partner to the projects. The status though, what does it mean being co-founded and associated partners in detail? So co-founded co partners, so who are they? They can be any partner of the listed partners just um, in the previous slide. They receive funds. They are, for, they are of limited number because there's a limited uh, amount of money dedicated, limited time, so limited number. Uh, they are expected to be integrated from the start. So you have a partnership that applies altogether uh, at, uh, for, for, the, for the proposal and uh, they are integrated from the start. There can be changes during the, the, the life of the project, but they expect it to be integrated from the start. And they implement activities and they report. They have obligations. On the periphery, associated partners. Well, they are any of the listed partners, uh, the previous listed partners. They don't receive funds, but they are paired with an active, we would say, with a, a co funded partner that can cover travel and accommodation costs. This is one thing. So when there's an, uh, a co-funded partner in the project, uh, they, are, they, they, they develop uh, connections with the, the associated partner and they are associated in the application form. So when the, the associated partner has to uh, attend a, a workshop, a meeting, uh, to share uh, an expertise or, or whatever, the travel and the communication costs are taken, are taken uh, care of by the, the, the partners, the partner that, uh, that is um, uh, confounded in the project. Potentially, they can be unlimited. They can be an unlimited number. They can be added at any time. Uh, it's better if they are added from the start because um, we see afterwards what the role of associated partners can be. But if we expect uh, the associated partners, for instance, to give some expertise, uh, to highlight some uh, uh, challenges in, the, in, a different, uh, in different territories of the Mediterranean, it's always better to provide this expertise from the start of the project so we can just orient also uh, the results. So, but potentially it can be added at any time uh, during the, the, the lifetime of the, of the project. And they take part in activities according to their added value and both ways. It means that the project partners benefit from, um, from the associated partners and the associated partners benefit as well in return of uh, the results of the projects. So we see three different added value. Can be advis advisory, can be end users and observers. Concretely, what does that mean, these three different roles? Well, the first one as advisors, being associated as advisors, advisors means to provide expertise. And as I was saying, is if you start right from the, the, the start of the project, if you are associated right from the start, you can, you know, you discuss with the partnership and you can put on the table some different um, um, factors um, in the issue that can orient as well uh, the, the activities uh, of the projects of the projects and, and so when you have uh, a return of this expertise uh, uh, investment i mean it's uh, it's right way more um, adjusted to your needs it's a win-win situation you can be also associated as end users to use the outputs of the projects and use you know most of the time you know it's all connected i mean it's not just one role but you know, at different times of the projects, the roles might vary a little bit. So, which means uh, being end users or final final beneficiaries. See, so it's because you would be interested in implementing, transferring the output of the projects, the tools, the action plans, and so on. And you can be also associated partners as observers to support and endorse um, what you seek with the project. Seek to increase its 
outreach and seeing the endorsement of its outputs. So this is also something that uh, we can uh, envisage also as, a, as an associated partner. So this is um, the roles and the status of associated partners. Now, how to become a partner? Because um, we want to be uh, to facilitate as much as, as much as possible. So this is more technical. So how can you do it? So just if, to answer so to the question, if Egypt can be partner, okay. mm -hmm. if you have understood now that uh, a partner from Egypt can be associated partner of a project under the inter agreement program, but cannot be a co-funded partner. So, um, to become a partner, we have uh, on our website, we have, we update the page for the calls for proposals. So, you find this information on the website of the program, so you have the, the link. And we provide a, a provisional calendar of the different calls, thematic calls. Well, for, in, for the moment, we have, we will only have a governance call, which is, um, which is, has been launched in February and not closed yet. So it's why we have this meeting today, because we, uh, especially in, in the governance issues, uh, we need your collaboration. So that's why we, we, we have this uh, seminar today, because in the long run, these projects, the governance projects, we run for seven years. So it means that we, we need to, um, to work from the start with, uh, with you to take into account um, the whole Mediterranean uh, needs and, uh, and challenges and, 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 and details into account to, uh, to adjust uh, as best as possible the, the solutions and also to, uh, to have this uh, profound and, and, and constructive uh, discussions that can really help uh, increase and, and improve the, the, the governance and the harmonization of our, of our approaches. Um, all the information is published, published on the website, but um, not only. We also um, encourage you to, um, to go on the page where we have find project partners and to register uh, in the partners forum. Um, this way you can be in touch with potential co-founded partners and express your interests. Because as we said, the process of being associated it's just you are in contact with partners um, drafting a proposal and one of the partners within the proposal uh, becomes your pair partner. Um, so and you'll be associated with one of the partner uh, of the project. So uh, this forum, you can express your interest in the types of projects you like, in, in the type of mission of you. For the moment, it's government projects. Um, so uh, you can initiate uh, exchanges with uh, different uh, partners uh, embedded in the, in the, in the drafting of uh, one proposal and discuss what would be your interests uh, and the win-win situation and uh, what you could bring to the projects, what the projects would bring to you and eventually uh, decided to um, uh, mutually to, to be associated uh, to the, the partner and the project. That's not the only thing, the only way to, uh, to be part of the program. We have, um, we have, we are setting up uh, a Euromed Academy and we also have uh, some activities in capacity building. So, um, the Euromed Academy um, is the result of a collaboration between all the projects of this programming period. So, I mean, this, uh, the, the types of projects we, we presented to you and this architecture with the different missions, we have experienced um, it or uh, somehow um, we, we have experienced we, we, draft, we, draw, we draw it from, uh, from our experience uh, where we had the horizontal projects during this programming period instead of having community projects we had horizontal projects that had the same first mission to, um, to animate a community of projects working in the same area. So we had eight different communities and these communities 
uh, representing more than 140 projects, um, thematic projects, uh, came together to uh, to build and to to set up this uh, this academy to share uh, the results and to um, around um, a community of practices and uh, of uh, of interests. Um, so the um, the aim of um, the aim of the of the academy is to share knowledge and improve the skills of a community of interest and practice. And the governance projects of this, so for the moment it's called Euromed Academy, but it's within the 2014-2020 program. And for this new programming period, the governance projects um, for which we have launched uh, a call for proposal will continue. We have this um, burden, <laughs> this mandatory activity to continue to feed this academy with the new 2001 and 2007 results. And um, you can register uh, to the training models. Uh, it's free of charge. And uh, we really aim at facilitating the transmission and uh, we want to make uh, the results as effective as possible. Um, this is a way of uh, consolidating the results and amplify them uh, within uh, the community of practice. Uh, this is very important for us and it's just sharing in a way that um, because most of the time when you have results you just put you know some reports on the table and say here it is it worked just take it but you know when you go to a municipality to a region uh, this is something really hard the question is how do I start and so this uh, training models aim at giving the first leads to how do we do it um, so this is, we, we will uh, pursue the, this academy throughout the, the whole programming period with the ambition of facilitating the transfer and the uptake of, of the results. So you'll be, and, and this, um, this academy is already ongoing and uh, there is, um, see if you go to the web page, you can already register to uh, training models. Uh, there is one on biodiversity for the moment. It is a uh, very interesting and, and, and planning, um, sea planning. So um, anyway, I invite you to, um, to already check and um, and experience the, the the first training. And for the next programming period, you'll be uh, you'll be uh, offered also to uh, to participate and and, uh, and know about uh, the different results. The ongoing and coming calls. Let's start with the ongoing. So, as I said, the program has launched the call for proposal for eight governance projects. So, eight because we have four missions, one of each type for each mission. So, one community project, one institutional dialogue project per mission. So, we will have eight governance projects. Uh, at the end of this call. It has been launched on February 24th and it will be running uh, until 1st of June. Uh, we have changed the date, so it's not the 24th of May, we have a, a little delay, uh, 1st of June. So for this, um, for the moment, uh, you can register on the, on the, the forum, uh, express your interest after you, 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 you go through again the material and see if uh, you think that priorities, um, uh, we share the same priorities and there are things that uh, ring the bell and, and you'd like to be involved. And uh, uh, you can exchange with the, 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 the partners that are drafting your proposals. And even after we have selected the projects, uh, if you are not associated with the project that have been, that, that will be selected, you can still engage uh, with these projects afterwards uh, and be uh, associated along the way. So um, um, you can start from now or uh, you can also after you have concrete uh, proposals on the table, it's sometimes easier to, uh, to understand uh, what could be the expectation from your side or what you could uh, retrieve or, 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 or benefit from, uh, from the different types of projects. So something that is still possible. And just to be a little bit um, 
uh, clearer on the um, on the types of um, on the types of uh, of actions uh, that we expect for uh, each uh, type of project. So it's I've already spoken about this, but this is the, the objectives of each type of project uh, more in detail. So you can maybe project yourself um, uh, working or um, engaging with uh, these uh, different types of projects within one of the mission. Um, so for the thematic community project, the idea is for the partnerships to establish conditions for the reuse of results, development of synergies and increase of co coordination between thematic projects. Um, and also uh, implement and support the implementation of transfer mainstreaming strategies of thematic projects results in practices of public and private actors at local, regional, national levels, providing the technical supports. So how could you, just to be a bit more concrete, uh, you could ask yourself, yes, but what do I do in this? Uh, or do I establish conditions? The projects, the partner, the core partners or the confident partners will have this responsibility to establish the conditions, but to, they, 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 they will be, they will be responsible responsible for putting together and, and developing the synergies between the projects, the thematic projects working uh, on the same area, towards the same mission. And you as an associated partner, since the idea is for the partners to develop um, technical knowledge and ease the process of transfer, as an associated partner, you could be already there if you think that what is proposed by um, by the mission or what the mission is about, if this is one of the needs that you feel is the one of your territory, um, you can be associated and already present yourself as a potential receiver of some interesting um, uh, projects results. And you know that this, you, you, it's, it's a long process to, um, to transfer or to receive and to implement in your territory something that has been developed someplace else because there are some adjustments to, to do, some uh, adaptations. So it's better to be, um, to be involved right from the start. So that might be a way for you uh, or um, uh, a desire for you to say, well, I'd like to be um, associated with the, the thematic community project uh, working on, for instance, sustainable terrain, because we have a, a need, we share the same needs, and maybe the results that we come out of the result of the projects will be of some help in our institutions um, to, um, um, to 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 um, to reach some changes. And then in this case, a thematic community project would work as a um, facilitator to take up the different results. And you would be privileged somehow because you'd be associated to the partners, so you would be a perfect candidate to the transfer um, process. Because there, um, their uh, goal is to implement transfer and streaming strategies of these thematic projects results into different um, uh, public and private uh, institutions at local, regional and national levels. And they, will to, and they will bring the technical support. Institutional dialogue projects. So the two main objectives will be to contribute to the implementation of transfer mainstreaming strategies, engaging local, regional, national authorities, um, EU ETC managing authorities, initiative strategies. So in this case, you, you see the, the different uh, um, perspective with the different types of projects. In this case, um, they will engage, they, 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 will, um, they will analyze maybe um, the, the partners within the partnerships uh, we probably um, analyze the landscape, the, 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 the institutional landscapes in the different areas 
and try to, to find some um, authorities that could be interested with what the program has to offer. So the, 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 um, the approach is a bit different, but it's highly complementary to thematic projects. And something I didn't uh, say from um, during this presentation yet is that these two governance projects will work very closely together. Uh, there will be some process internal process of coordination between these different projects and also with the with the GS uh, so that we work uh, they work together uh, very in a very complementary way and the second objective is um, is linked to the, the, the first one uh, which is to set up long-lasting conditions for permanent institutional and social dialogue to bridge the transnational dimension with the local solutions in order to contribute to territorial cohesion at the transnational Mediterranean level regarding each mission. So we pass, you know, to just engaging um, with, uh, we'd say, receivers, but it's in a, a broader way uh, to, to set up these conditions for a, a permanent uh, dialogue. Uh, and it's part of what we are trying also to set up here, because the GS, the Joint Secretariat of the, of the program, will, uh, will also support um, the, the government project actions. And for instance, this seminar today is also a support to, to, this, um, to this dialogue with all, all, all the partners in the Mediterranean. So, so this is the two um, types of projects from a different angle from their uh, specific uh, objectives and you can project yourself um, in maybe as being uh, partners or associated partners because some of you maybe are eligible also to receive funds um, so this is uh, um, and, and the, 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 the fact of being associated partners uh, has to be is discussed with the different uh, uh, with the partners um, because we see there is a, a debate to engage to see uh, well, what is the the best uh, the best role to uh, to take um, to take in a, as an associated partner. Coming close, so in June two thousand twenty-two, uh, the program will open a call for proposals for thematic projects uh, pursuing the selected selected uh, specific objectives of the program. Uh, which were presented earlier. Um, for, to give you an idea, we will forecast about 42 projects to be selected. So we'll have eight, uh, just because we gave you the name of eight, uh, the number of eight um, governance projects. In this case, we expect about 42 projects to be selected uh, within these different types of um, study, test and transfer projects, these three, three uh, types of projects for the first uh, thematic core. But more information will be posted on the website and we'll come back uh, to you with more detailed information about this call when we have all the details. And, um, and the regulation for the participation will remain the same. So co-founded and associated partners, that's the same. So and to summarize in a nutshell, so we'd like to invite you and, and we would be very um, very happy to uh, to have this to start this new programming period in a different way uh, with really engaging um, uh, with all the Mediterranean from the start. So we would really like to 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 involve you by becoming uh, partners, either confounded or when eligible or associated uh, partners. Um, register in the forum, uh, setting your interest if you have any in exchanges with uh, the partners that are already maybe dra drafting uh, proposals. And we invite you to stay tuned on the new, on the calls, on the coming calls and the different news. From our side, we will keep you uh, regularly updated on the developments because even if you you don't feel interested maybe this time of um, being associated to a, par uh, a project. Maybe with the over time, uh, we'll come back to you with the different uh, developments of uh, of the project. And maybe there will be something that will trigger your attention and your interest, 
and it will still be time and the time to uh, to to start um, exchanging on this. And we will also uh, inform you about the training sessions with the Euromedic Academy. So for, for the moment, it's uh, one uh, starting in April. And uh, so it's the second training modules, and there will be six of them uh, until the end of the year. So there will be four more to come. So uh, this is um, how we intend to, um, to, um, to, to involve you in, in, in the program and, and trying to um, to, for you to benefit from, uh, from more product results and we would really like also for you to give us your insight and also share your experience because it's not, we not only, Sophie said it earlier, uh, we want to reuse results but not only the one that we have produced in the past but also taking um, some results from other parts uh, of the Mediterranean and from other programs, other uh, initiatives. I think it's welcome as long as it's um, it um, goes towards a, a better, um, better impact on the on the Mediterranean. So we open to all uh, the suggestions and your your expertise, and we need it if you want uh, this um, this to work and, and going uh, better, towards a better governance of these issues for the Mediterranean uh, territories for all of that. So um, uh, I, I thank you for your attention, and and we will pursue the, the discussions because I see that there will be probably lots of questions popping up and mm -hmm. we we'll have uh, um, also live questions. Thank you, Lidwin. Just to um, stay on the regular update on developments, it's in, as you have understood, this was the first meeting co-organized with the UFM and Westman. We will have several others depending on the developments of the, of the program, the course, etc. And uh, in the framework of the roadmaps, we have developed both with WestMed and with UFM, and specifically with uh, the, the one with uh, UFM, uh, just to know that uh, you will have the possibility in the uh, following meetings to have a direct translation also in Arabic. So this is important. Yeah. We, we didn't have the time to settle this for this time, but we will have it uh, for next time after the uh, beginning of uh, autumn. So thank you to all of you. And uh, do we have questions that we have not answered yet? We have Just answered to... most of part of the question. Okay. Just one that is linked to more about uh, governance and thematic projects. Um, The question is understood governance projects are mean to build the results from thematic projects. How is this expected to happen if governance project call is out before the thematic projects call? Should first governance project build of interregnal projects from the previous programming period? Yes, that's it. You know, you we have already had this process of um, triggering uh, synergies, exchanges between uh, uh, thematic projects. Um, through what we called uh, horizontal projects, and we already have a bunch of results we can build on. So these uh, new governance projects will already, you know, uh, prepare also the, the other things. They will work on, on the results that have been already produced, uh, but they will also seek for other results from outside. Um, and they will also uh, pay, uh, prepare uh, the conditions for the coming projects to be already um, um, integrated in a community as soon as they are selected. You know, so they have to, to, to prepare the ground for these new projects to come. But they have already some material to work on because even though uh, we didn't have these formations in the previous programming period, we do have worked on um, related uh, issues that can be already um, uh, encompassed in, uh, in, these, uh, in these missions. So. And just last, last thing, uh, I remind you that all the presentations and the registration will be published on the website because we have received a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. yeah, and with the links, yes. Yeah, so with the links the and English. translation in three languages. So you can check on the website of Interag Europe at the program. There was also a question from uh, Dr. Omar Arabiat asking who's in the new countries joining the program. 
Unfortunately, it's not a Middle East country. <laughs> no. It's Bulgaria. So. It's Bulgaria and North Macedonia, the, the Republic of North Macedonia, who joined the program, and also uh, some regions from space. Mm. Which, so we have uh, 10, uh, 69 regions from 10 EU member states countries and four IPA, so pre accession countries, which are Bosnia Herzegovina, Albania, Montenegro, and uh, the Republic of North Macedonia. So, just to, to, to sum up, this means that all EU member states, uh, uh, country, uh, partners coming from EU member states and from those four IPA countries can be eligible for funding within the program. And all the countries which are outside the EU uh, and outside those four countries can be uh, eligible for uh, being associated partners. And uh, expenditures can be covered for participating in specific activities. This is the sum up of how we can participate as partner or associated partner. Okay. There is a hand raised, Hafe. Yes, I thank you very much for the given explanation that uh, you highlighted uh, during the debates. I would like just to um, uh, to get more information about uh, how to distinguish between the uh, member states who are, I mean, in the member states mainly coming from the southern region of the Mediterranean. Uh, who are eligible for uh, co-funded projects and associated um, projects. And there, and there, what you say, the associated partners and co-funded partners, of course, I didn't catch up the different criteria because there are some interferences and also some common uh, criteria between the two types of partners. So I would like just to know if for the member states of the central region, is there any more criteria to um, a clear uh, mind that people is of uh, uh, those partners on this program. Thank you. No, I, I think there might be just the confusions because I said that some of you could be co um, eligible, which means that um, in the Westman initiative, you, you do have uh, partners located in the, in the EU. So that's why. Uh, so, so it was maybe confusing, but the EU, yeah. EU and, and, and bodies. Yes. bodies located in EU countries, EU member, EU member states countries, uh, and IPA countries, but only the four that are in the program, which I, I have just uh, mentioned before, so Albania, Bosnia Herzegovina, Montenegro, and uh, North Macedonia. And the 27 uh, member states, then you are eligible for, if you come from those countries, you are eligible for funding. If you don't come from those countries, you are eligible only to be associated partner. Is that clear now? Uh, not really. Um, uh, for for the southern region, are you um, considering all the member states from the southern region of the Mediterranean um, as partners or co-funded partners? No, it's, it's you, mean, you mean yes, from Tunisia, for example, from uh, uh, Morocco. So non-EU member states. It's only associated partners. Okay. Actually, it's it's more clear now. I thank you. Okay, so I think that uh, if you we don't have other questions, we can. Which one just uh, asking if we can find it uh, infra could the thematic projects include an infra infrastructure projects? Uh, no, we have small sure. <laughs> small infrastructure, uh, small scale investments, mm -hmm. not infrastructure projects, but small scale investments within the testing projects. Meaning that if you want to test a solution which needs a small scale investment, this can be funded by uh, a project, an interreg um, Euromed project, but not uh, heavy infrastructures. This is not covered 
uh, by transnational um, interreg projects. Okay. So thank you to all of you. You are, uh, we are really uh, happy to have so many people here. Uh, of course, if you have still questions, you can ask them through our website. We have an FIQ, a faculty asked question uh, section dedicated to any uh, doubt, question, um, comment you may uh, have. So please use it, and uh, and of course our colleagues from the UFM and Westmed Initiative are also, um, I'm sure, available for any question or uh, any contact, make any 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 contact or link or liaise with us. Thank you. We are just on time. <laughs> As one says, contact, please. Um, well, we, I think Florian just um, uh, well, shared again the, the, the link with the forum. Yes, yes. just make so sure that you. Yes. All our contacts are okay. uh, on our website also. So mm -hmm. you will find in the contact section of our website. Please put the website. Um, I just realized that I didn't introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm the only one that can say I'm between La Fontaine. <laughs> you, you, you presented everybody, you introduced everybody. Yes, I introduced everyone and I didn't introduce myself. But, uh, well. Okay, so all our contacts are in, uh, in the website as well. Thank you, bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, bye bye. 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 bye.